Welcome to our study. In this series, we're going to watch Jesus serve, which means we're going to open up the Gospels and see Him do three things. Touch the untouchable, correct negative and wrong mindsets, faulty thinking, and we're going to see Him lead us by example. So today we're going to look at Luke chapter 4, verses 31 through 36, and watch Jesus interact with a demon-possessed man. Then he went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath he taught the people. They were amazed at his teaching, because his words had authority. In the synagogue there was a man possessed by a demon, an impure spirit. This is early in Jesus' ministry. He had just started his rabbinical ministry, he's gathering his disciples, and he's preaching or teaching in a synagogue, which is the equivalent of our local church. And in the process of doing that, someone afflicted with a demon comes up and interacts with him. Now, it's easy to look at the Bible and, and see that story and just kind of move on, but really let that sink in for a minute. Imagine we're doing our Wednesday night Bible study like we do every week, and someone comes in and they're half naked and they're maybe cut up and then they look awful and they're yelling and screaming obscenities and just awful things, what would your reaction be? Immediately, I think we'd want to get that person out of here. I mean, like, get him out of the church building, make sure he doesn't harm anybody. And you can imagine in the local synagogue in Jesus' time, that's what people thought too. Get this guy out of here. What is he doing here? I don't want him to hurt anybody. There are probably children around. We don't want them to be affected. And this is one way that Jesus stands up and is apart from the, the everyday person. He's going to serve even those who other people would not want anything to do with. He cried out at the top of his voice, Go away. What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down before them all and came out without injuring him. This is something that probably none of these people had ever seen before. Apparently back in this time, it was pretty common for demon possessions to be going on. It was one of those spiritual things that happened back then, but not as much we see anymore. But they'd seen something like this. Someone had had a demon. They were able to recognize what was wrong with them. But they probably had never seen anyone just say the words, stop. And the demon stopped acting up. And so we see that all Jesus had to do is say one word and the demon completely submitted to him. Now there's some serious theological themes going on that we need to discuss for a moment. Think back to the beginning of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1. How did God create everything? The Bible says in the beginning God spoke and things came into existence. There's that theme already in the first chapter of Genesis that God's words alone make things happen. When we move on to John chapter 1, we see that Jesus is the Word. He is a living embodiment. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us of God. So, in a spiritual way, when God spoke, it manifested itself some way into Jesus. He is the Word of God. And so then in Luke chapter 4, we see that same theme being carried over, that all Jesus had to do is say one word, and He had authority over Satan. And just for some context, there were some vague writings back in Jesus' time about exercising demons, about how to get demons out of people, and it involved a lot of religious uh, nonsense, really. Hold this thing up at this time and say these magic words at that time, and according to text, it was kind of hit or miss, and people were just kind of stabbing in the dark trying to figure out this process. There was no confusion in Jesus' part. He says one word, and things are over. And after this ordeal, people are obviously amazed. How did this guy do this? Is he some kind of magician? Is he, is he a prophet? And they were amazed specifically because they'd never seen this kind of power and authority before. Now, in the 21st century, we might not see demon possessions like this, but Satan is still active in other ways in people's lives. For instance, in Galatians 5, Paul outlines the fruit of the Spirit, and the fruit of the flesh. And more or less what his, his message is, is different people are either going to be producing good works from God, or they're going to produce, be producing bad works from the flesh, or you could boil that down to say, from Satan. Think about how this man would have felt in his own community. 
for no fault of his own probably, he was overcome with this demon possession. And all of a sudden, someone who has an active family and he has a support system, he has his community, all of a sudden, nobody knows what to do with him. All of a sudden, he's a complete outcast, roaming from place to place, causing trouble. Think about not being able to talk to your family. Think about not being able to go to the temple. Think about being completely untouchable in your own society. That's what was happening to this guy. And all of a sudden, he meets a man who not only doesn't flinch away from his presence, but with one word, he heals the biggest issue he's ever had in his life. And the reality is, in our culture, there are just some issues that we consider, I don't want to touch. They're just too far out there. I don't even want to engage them. I don't even want to talk to them. And sometimes even being in their presence makes me feel uncomfortable. And while those people who are untouchable to us might not be under Satan's control directly, he is still playing a role in their lives. In Galatians 5, 19-21, Paul outlines the works of the flesh, which he lists all kinds of awful things that, that when we focus too much on the world and, and what it wants, that we start producing bad things in our lives. That's Satan working in people's lives. And if you look back at that list, some of those things we would consider like, e, I don't want to deal with that. Ooh, that's a little, a little too uh, involved for me. And, and if we're not careful, we start to ostracize those people and say, I, I can't be associated with you because of these awful things. I don't want to be pushed away from my own society, from, from my church or my, my family or from my culture. And so Jesus exposes their faulty thinking by not banishing him, but instead trying his best to help them. And of course, he was the son of God. Of course, he had the spirit of God upon him and the ability to banish demons. But still, if Jesus is our example, we should follow suit in the same way. So what would Jesus do as the ultimate servant for those in our society who, are, who we deem untouchable? Well, we can tell from this story that he wouldn't flinch away from them. He would have compassion. He would understand where they're coming from and their struggles, and he would do everything in his power to help them. Now, while you and I probably aren't able to banish a demon from someone, there are other things that we can do and sacrifice for their sake and reach out to them spiritually. As we close, let me challenge you with this thought. When was the last time that you stood in someone's presence who made you uncomfortable? If we're going to be like Jesus, we have to become comfortable being around those who are lost. They're probably not going to look like us. They're probably not going to talk like us. They're probably not going to act like us. But Jesus saw through Satan's influence to the person who was being afflicted. We need to do the same if we're going to be disciples of Jesus and servants like he was. Hey, you're still here. Thanks for sticking around. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give us your feedback, comment, subscribe, and tell us what you'd like to see next.